Okay, so how is everyone today? Pretty good. Okay, so today, let's see, what did we talk about last time? Uh, <coughs> dividing polynomials and things. And, no, we talked about Horner's scheme to evaluate a polynomial. And we talked about classifying the points of rational functions. I'm trying to get this thing to cooperate with me. Why is it not doing it? Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. The button. Okay, I'm going to turn it off for a second. I can't turn it off either. Huh. Maybe this one? Interesting. Okay, well, I'm going to unplug it and plug it back in. So, while I'm waiting for this to boot back up, any, any questions about uh, last, last week's assignment? The one that you did two days ago in lab? It's fine? Okay, so now uh, we're going to play two games today. Well, what I mean is that we're going to mathematically analyze two games today. So the first game is, uh, so I want you to imagine the following. Imagine that we've got a pile of matchsticks or whatever kind of thing you want, M&Ms, whatever, doesn't matter. But y usually the way the, when you're, when you're doing this story, the, the, they're, they're ma the items are matchsticks. So imagine you have a pile of matchsticks and it's a two-player game. And the, the, the way it works is that we all agree, here's the pile of, or the two people agree, uh, here's the pile of matchsticks. And then we select a positive integer more than one, for example, something like four, and say, OK, at each round of the game, uh, you can, you, each one of us can remove one, two, three, or four matchsticks. So when it's my move, I can remove one, two, three, or four. And when it's your move, you can, you can remove one, two, three, or four. Yes? Is this based off the uh, Dr. Nim game? <laughs> yes. And, <clears throat> and the purpose, uh, the, the, to win the game, you have to be the last one to remove the matchsticks. So you're the one that, that takes the last, the last matchstick. So you're the one to kill the pile. Okay, does everyone understand the game? Okay, so that thing's booted up now. Today's the ninth, right? Yeah. So this is the matchstick game. So, uh, so let, let's pl let's play. So I'll I'll uh, <clears throat> I'll put twenty dots on the on the thing here. So that's uh, five. Uh, then. That's another five. That's five. And so there's, there's 20 matchsticks, 20 dots. OK, so then uh, so I need a, a volunteer to play. I got this. You, you're going to play? So we're going to, so uh, how, how many do we want to be able to remove? So something smallish, not like 20, because then, then it wouldn't be a game, right? Mm -hmm. Let's go with three. Three. OK, so then. So uh, we're going to call this the K is three game. So as, as a result of that, what, how many, when it's each person's turn, how many are they allowed to remove? One, two, One, two or three. So in particular, you can't, you can't skip your turn, which would be equivalent to saying I'm going to remove zero. So you're forced, you're forced to play. 
Okay, so, so you go first. How many would you like to remove? Two. Okay. Uh, I'll remove two, I guess. So I, I, I know how to, there, so the, the, yeah, the end story of the game, the, the end story is that there's an optimal way to play, but I'm not playing optimally right now, I'm just... Oh, no, okay. I was going to say, I feel like I'm going to lose this one. Um, let's go with three. Three? Okay. It, it doesn't really matter. I mean, I just, I just want you all to see how the game is played. Uh, I'll remove one, just because. So I'll do three. Okay, now now it's getting small enough to where you might be able to figure out what 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 you need to do. Yeah. So try and think two moves ahead. If if whatever you do, okay. So you're gonna take two. Okay, now it's down to four, and I'm, I can remove one or two or three. Okay, so let, let's think about this. Suppose I remove one, then how many are left? Three. Three. Then, 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 he, then he could now win by taking three. Okay, suppose I, take, uh, suppose I take two, then how many would be left? Two. Then he could win by taking two. Suppose I take three. How many would be left? One. one, and then he could he could win by taking one. Okay, so it's my turn. I'll take you know two. I guess doesn't matter. I'll take the other two. Okay, but notice notice uh, so so he so he wins, and I'll I'll do that in just a second. But notice he he could still lose. Right, he could say one. That's true. I could. So 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 it's not it's not it's not a foregone conclusion that he'll win. But at this position, he does have a winning move. Okay, and, and he, ch he chose the winning move. Okay, good. So in, any question about that, the way the game went? So green wins. Green wins uh, because green was the last, w t t killed the pile, took, took, the, took the last matchsticks. Okay, so that's nice. Let's consider now. So my, my claim to you is that there's an optimal way to play this game. And then when, when the pile was big, when there were 20, you know, it's kind of hard to imagine the sequence of moves that might lead to you winning. But when it got small enough, I asked him to think, think ahead, how, uh, th think, of, think ahead, make your move, and, and think about what I would do in response. When it became small enough, he was able to see what to do. Right? So, let's see if we can take <coughs> small games, small games, uh, and, and figure out what the optimal move is, and let's, let's build up to bigger and bigger games. <coughs> okay. So let's again, just for, for no good reason, I'll, I'll stick with the KS3 game. That is to say, that, that tells you what the allowable moves are. But do understand, we could be playing the KS10 game, and then you would be able to remove one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, or ten matchsticks. But just for the sake of illustration, we'll stick with, with KS3. Okay. So we're gonna make uh, <clears throat> we're gonna make uh, a, a table here. So uh, this is for the KS3 game. So N will be the number uh, the, the, the size of the pile. N is the size of the pile. And um, we'll say M is the move that you should make. The move that you should make in response to that. Okay, so then for, for pile size 1, and it, so it, it's, it's your turn to play. So if there's one, if there's one match, or one thing, uh, w what's your optimal move? One. 
to, to take it, right? In fact, it's the only permissible move. Okay. So let's imagine that the pile size is two. Okay. Then what move should you make? Two, two right? Because if, if you if you take two, then you would kill the pile and win. Okay, suppose the pile size is three. Then what should you do? Take three. Take three. And be that would result in killing the pile and you would win. Okay, so so far, so good. What if the pile size is four? <coughs> ah, yeah, take a look. So let, let's consider. Th this is the position I was in at the end of the game, right? If, it, if it's your move, and you, you have four, and, and, and there's four, then if you take one, and, and you're playing against me, then I could respond by taking three. If you take two, I could respond by taking two. If you take three, I could respond by taking one. So in a sense, if, if you were playing against me, and I was playing to win, and you know I have moderate intelligence, you, you could not win from this position. So can you see that this, that if you're playing against an optimal player, you lose? if you get here. Okay, so I'll make this a, a, a sad face. So you, you, you couldn't possibly win from that position. Okay, it's, well, to, to be clear, if you were playing against an optimal player, you, you could not win from that position. If you were playing against a suboptimal sub player, you could conceivably win. Okay, suppose there's five. What should you do? Take one. Take one. Okay, why? That puts them in the right, that puts your opponent in the suboptimal position, right? In in the in the in the, the frowny face position. Right? So you should take one. And to be clear, the reason why you should take one is so uh, so the adversary <coughs> is here. So you put your adversary in the frowny face position. Okay. Fine. Suppose that there are suppose that there are six dots. Then, then what should you do? You should take two. Why should you take two? <coughs> yeah, to, to, put, to put your adversary in the frowny face position. Right? So this is again, you're seeing a pattern? Maybe, maybe. Well, let's continue for, you know, uh, just in case. Uh, so if, if there's seven, Then what should you do? You should take three so that you'll put your adversary in the frowny face position. Okay. <clears throat> what if the pile size is eight? Then what? Yeah, if you're playing an optimal player, you will have lost. You, you, you will lose if, you, if you're playing an optimal player and you start in this position. Why? Right. So in, in this place, your allowable moves, because we're playing the KS3 game, you could take one. Suppose you take one. That means you would hand the opponent the, the game with seven. And then they would do what? They'd take three to put you in position four. 
and you and therefore you would lose. So, yes? So every multiplicity of k plus 1 is already lost? That's right. So, uh, so this is another frowny face position. So, so, so can we agree, can we agree that, th that this truly is just going to continue forever now? So what's, what's really happening, or, or one, one way to look at what's happening. Right, right. So in, in a sense what's happening, what I want you to see is that th this is the smallest version of the game right here. And we considered every possibility for this small version of the game. Every, every conceivable possibility. And what I'm telling you is that as you go on, you get another copy of this smallest version of the game right here. You get another copy of it. So this, this, this copy of this uh, is an exact copy of that game. Okay, and all of this is, it, supposing you're playing optimally, both, both, are, both uh, players are playing optimally, this, uh, th this is not a relevant part of the game. So this pattern will continue uh, forever. So now let's, let's uh, with that in mind, yeah, let's, let's make the comment. So any time, uh, so, so let's, let, let's characterize when are you at a frowny, pace, uh, a frowny face position? K plus one. So any time, well, let's be clear, any time n is equal to what? Yeah, a multiple of k plus one, right? Is k plus one multiplied by some d. Okay, so in this game, because k is 3, that means that any time that you are, in any time that it's your move, and y the, 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 the size of the pile is a multiple of 4, if you're playing against an optimal player, you will lose. Okay? So uh, any time anytime this is the case. So an another way to say this, Another way to say this, uh, that uh, n is a multiple of k plus 1, is to say that uh, something, something to do with uh, modulo. So for those of you who've taken a math class that has uh, modulo, uh, like congruence, modular congruence, how can, you, how, can we, how can we write this using modular congruence? This is not a thing? <laughs> OK, well. Uh, so, n is equivalent to 0 modulo uh, k plus 1. So that means that, that n uh, is a multiple of k plus 1. Okay, so as an aside, because it, it seemed like I didn't get very many bytes on modular congruence, let, let's, <laughs> let's, de let's define what that means. So from the division algorithm, so this is, this is an aside now, uh, a remark within a remark. From the division algorithm, uh, given, given an n and a d, uh, so n is in the naturals, and d is in the non-zero naturals. So, so, so given, given that uh, situation, there exists a Q and an R that are, that are in the naturals, such that what? N is QD plus r. And we can make a further, if from the division algorithm, we can make an, e, a, an even further, uh, an, a, a, an even further restriction on r. What, how can we restrict it? <coughs> yeah, so in particular, 0 less or equal to r strictly less than d. So, so in this case, for, for, for this equation, for this equation right here, uh, in is congruent, equivalent to R modulo D. 
So this is just like a quick, a quick and dirty definition of, of, of modulo. So what it's saying is that when you ask, to, 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 say that, to say that n is congruent to r modulo d is to say that the, if you were to divide n by d, its remainder would be r. <laughs> okay, so then uh, suppose, that we're, suppose that we're not in a frowny face position. <laughs> so that's the logical negation of a frowny face. Suppose that we're there. <laughs> Suppose that we're there. What move should you make? I, I agree with that. That's a great human way to say it. Whatever move would put them in the frowny face <laughs> position. I agree. But, but now I need a... I, it's good. It's good. But now I need a formula. Well, n, n minus k... Uh, no, that wouldn't work. Because in the first place, if n is really big, like a million, and k is 3, then you couldn't take away 999,997. <laughs> you know, subtract off the remainder using modulo. OK. To get to the optimal position. OK. So, so let's think about it here. So, uh, so for example, if, if, if the game was if we were at seven, how many did we say we should take away? Three. We should take away three. Well, what is, what is the remainder when seven is divided by four? Three. How about, what is the remainder when six is divided by four? <coughs> Two. What is the remainder when five is divided by four? One. And then what is the remainder when four is divided by four? Zero. Ah, so what, what is the, so what, what's the condition here? Yes. It is that, so any time this is the case, which is to say any time that the remainder of n divided by k plus 1 is zero, you're going to lose against an optimal player. If you're not in that position, then you should set. Then you should take. Uh, you should take. M equal to R. Where, uh, where what? Where <coughs> N is equal to whatever Q times K plus one plus R. Or if you like, you could say when N is congruent to R modulo modulo what modulo k plus 1 and you'll also need that 0 is less than or equal to r is less than k plus 1 okay so now let's play this game again <coughs> let's play this game again uh, with a different volunteer but now uh, now I'm going to play optimally, okay? But I'll still give I'll still give first player first move. So one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. Five. Okay, so who wants to? The way that you said, it, the way that you said, I'll still let the other person go first makes it sound distinctly like it's a trap. It's not. It's not. Be, be, because that's true. It does. It does. So, so uh, I need to. Like a trap. No, I mean, so the, for, so it so it depends on. So what? So we'll agree to in is so. In fact, I just need a volunteer. Okay, you want to play? Okay, so presently n is 20. Do you want to do with some other n? For what k? You, you ch you'll choose the n and the k, but don't do something like okay. n is 10 and k is 10. Don't, not, not, not like that. Okay. So n is currently 20. Do you want a different n? That's fine. Okay. What k do you want? 
You, you don't want two. <laughs> five. Five. You don't want five? <laughs> no, actually, no, you were right. You're right. Sorry. Uh, you're, you're right. So which, which K do you want? I, 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 I had it wrong. In, I had it wrong in my head. Yeah. Five. Five. Okay. So we'll play the K is five game. And to be clear, that means that each of us is able to do, to do what? One, two, three, four, or five. That means that we, we must remove at least one, each of us, in each round. Uh, and then we, we're allowed to move, r remove one, two, three, four, or five. Okay. It's your move. Okay. <laughs> You're going to think about it, right? You're going to calculate. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead. Two. You're going to move, remove two. Okay. So now. So. Not, not you, because you, you said to. Let, let's ask the crowd now. Was that an optimal move? Yes. Okay, why do you say yes? Because it leaves you with 18, and that's, uh, that's one divided by k plus 1 is going to be a range of 0. Right. So this is the k is 5 game. And then what, what happens is that the, all the action is, is, is going to be modulo k plus 1, so modulo 6. So, so look at what's... Look at what's happened. The game has, has been handed to me, and there's 18. And notably, w what's true about 18? It's divisible by 6, which is to say it's, uh, its remainder, it, it, well, you could say it like this. You could say 18 modulo 6 is 0, or if you like, uh, 18 divided by 6. Uh, the quotient is not relevant. The remainder is 0. Does everybody see that? OK. So now. Now I just have to hope that she makes a mistake. So I'll take one. <laughs> Five. Five, okay. Okay, so now how many are there? Twelve. Oh, right? Okay, so I'll take, uh, I'll take three. <laughs> so does everybody see the game now? Okay, so in, in particular, in particular, aside from the first move, aside from the very first move, no, notice, notice the, the way the pattern is. If I take one, she takes how many? Five. And if I take three, she takes how many? Three. Now, now what's the relationship between these moves? Yes, they add to six. Okay. So now, besides the first move, Right. The first move is, is what she needed to do so that she could get me in, in, into the losing position. Right? Okay. Uh, well, just for sake of... Uh, no, it's your turn. No, yeah, it's your turn. No, I, I just took three. I, I just took... No, you just took... Sorry. <laughs> you just took three. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Good. Yeah. Sorry. I was confused. Okay. So I guess I'll take two. Okay. I'll take four. Okay. Four. Okay, so she won. But again, I'd like I'd like to point out the pattern. So the the first move is anomalous. Okay, but then then it was then 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 it was mine and then hers. So notice that that this th this was the back and forth. That that's a group of six. And then and then this was the back and forth. Another group of six. And then this was the back and forth, another group of six. OK, so playing against an optimal player, there was no way I could win. OK, now l l let's, let's do a similar thing. So how about, so, so in, in that case, first player wins. One, two, three, four. Five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so then just for sake of constancy, I'll keep K as five. <coughs> uh, but now I'm going to make the pile have size 24. So who wants to play? <laughs> 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 you, you want to play? You want to play? Okay. 
Okay. So, uh, you're first player. <laughs> I'll take four. We'll you take four. Okay, so that means that the pile size, is, that the pile currently has 20. So what should I do in response? I, sh I should take two. Okay, I should take two, because now the pile size is 18. Okay. I'm going to take four. Okay. So now the pile size is 14. What should I do? Take two. Okay. Three. Now I lost count. So now there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So now there's nine. Uh, so I should take three. Right. You're, you. What you start. You yes. Once you're in a winning position, now you just take the complement, the, the 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 modular negation of whatever they just took. But suppose that suppose that okay, we're playing and. You know, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not thinking real straight. Okay. Suppose that. Okay. Now I'm gonna. Now I, I select two. Not one. Okay. So 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 he wants one now. So why one? Right. Because now that puts me. Now that puts me into the losing position. So he takes one, and now I look at the board and say, oh, <laughs> and I had it. Uh, I had it, but then, but then I lost it. So suppose, just to finish it out, suppose I take three, then, then how, how many do you want? Also three? Oh, he's not listening. So I'll say he's taking three. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so he wins, right? So what I want you to see is that, is that even just one suboptimal move, even just one is enough to to, to turn the table completely. Okay? Good. So any question about the game? So what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to um, you're going to have to write a write a program that plays this game. Okay? A strategy that says for this pile and for, for this K, for this N and for this K, uh, make a move. Okay? Now, here, one thing to think about one thing to think about is what if, uh, for, for your program, what if uh, you start in a frowning face position? Okay. Then if you happen to be playing against an optimal player, you, you, no matter what program you write, you're going to lose. Okay. Because if, you, if you're playing against an optimal adversary, you can't win from a frowning face position. Okay. So if you find yourself in a frowny face position, what should you do? Just to find the end take. Well, I, what I mean to say is suppose we're playing the game K is 5. You want to check if they're even playing optimally not. Well, uh, you, won't, you won't be able to tell that because literally you, your program will be a function of two arguments, N and K. So it won't, it won't have any more than that. Just pick one, okay? So, do you mean, do you mean like, uh, you, you mean like what? What specifically? Pick a number, like just randomly, or always pick three, or whatever. Okay, so let's do let's do always pick three, just for sake of argument. Okay, I, I understand. So here's here's a uh, here's twenty four dots, and so uh, so I need another volunteer. So who who wants to play? You want to you want to play again? Okay. So uh, so we're playing the KS five game, and you're player one. And I'm telling you right now that you're in a frowny face position. <laughs> okay. So do we all understand that? Okay, so um, so so the strategy was that, that that was offered is always pick 
if you find yourself in a frowny face position, always pick some number, like a constant. So what constant are you, I want you to take that strategy, but you can pick the constant. One. Okay, so he's always gonna pick one. So now, uh, now, now that he said that, I'm gonna reveal my strategy. My strategy is also, I'm always gonna pick a constant. And the constant I'm going to pick is five. <laughs> Shocker. Okay, so that's my strategy. So now, now that I've revealed my strategy to you, and, and I won't change my strategy anymore, I promise that I'm always gonna take five, no matter what. Are you gonna change your strategy? Wouldn't you like to know? <laughs> no, I, I'm not gonna change, I, 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 I mean it, I'm gonna take five. Probably change to a different number somewhere in the middle. Okay, so, so what I mean is that what I want you to do, I want you to have a strategy that, that says, if I'm in a winning position, a non-frowning face position, you'll play optimally. But if you're in a frowning face position, I want you to choose the constant you're going to always select. So you said one first, but now I want you to change it. <laughs> okay. Which, which, which well, constant? Four options here. It, 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 does, it actually doesn't even okay. matter. So it just any, any, select any one. Two. Two. So, so it's your move, and you're in a frowning face position. So I already know what you're going to do. You're going to select two, because that's what you just said. Yes. Okay. And I broadcasted my strategy of I'm always going to pick five, no matter what. Now, if I was playing optimally, that five is not optimal. No. Okay. So uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take five because that's what I said I was going to do. Okay, so now what? <laughs> now you got to count. <laughs> How many are? Uh, um, that's 17, okay. I can math really. The lowest multiple of six less than 17 is? Oh, so take five. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Good. I'm sorry. It was a long. Yeah, it's okay. Okay. So, uh, no, you're red. Uh, so, um, like this, I guess. I promise there's a reason I'm not major. No, I can't do arithmetic uh, at any time of day. <laughs> so. I usually just look at arithmetic and I'm just like, yeah, that's a flight. I don't have to worry about that. So I, I take five because that's that's what. That's what I always do. Okay, then what are you going to do? <laughs> you're you're going to do did one, right? Wait. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So now I'm going to take five. I don't need this kind of self-doubt right now. <laughs> All right. I'm not here for this. Then I take five because I said that's what I'm always going to do. And then... I take the last one. Yeah, because that's the only permissible move anyway. So, so now, did everybody see that, that, I, that the way, the way I, set, I set it up? I, I, I put him in a, as first player in a frowny face position. And then he said, and I said, I want, I want you to tell me right now that you, of, of your constant strategy if, if you find yourself in a frowny face position. He said, I'm always going to take one. Then I revealed my strategy and said, well, it turns out I'm always going to take five. What, what is the logical consequence of that if, we, if neither one of us was allowed to change our strategy? He would lose. He would lose. He would lose against it, what is essentially the dumbest possible player, right? The player that makes no thought to the game and always plays five. But, but he would lose because he has this strategy of, of choosing a constant. Okay, and it turns out that it's just a very suboptimal constant. So, so suppose that you were playing against, you were playing some it, one of these games uh, with some n and some k. Uh, how could you how could you ensure that even if you started in a, in a losing position, a frowny face position, uh, that you wouldn't you wouldn't lose to a constant player who just happens to be your complementary con uh, who, whose constant happens to be complementary to yours? How could you make sure? Okay, what do you mean? I think it's Don't right. use a constant. <laughs> yeah? Change it so it's a complement or whatever the constant of yours is. So like say... Yeah, but you wouldn't know the move that I just played. Yeah, so like, so say you picked three and the complement of that is two or whatever, then you could play the complement of whatever. Or not. Or, never mind. 
Okay. <clears throat> How could you make sure? Okay. But still, still, if we were playing the K the K game, if if you're if you start out in a suboptimal position, a frowny face position, and your strategy is to always play one, if my strategy is to always play K, just your first one and then the rest can be different Okay, how will you make it different? Because here's the thing, you you your 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 function that you're gonna write has no memory of what's happened. Okay, so you're saying. So you're saying take take n, divide it by k, and then you get the q n and the r, and then take the q, the quotient, and then do it by k, and select <laughs> and select select that remainder. Yeah. yeah, that might work. That might mix it up uh, to where you're to where you're not not choosing a constant. Uh, but there there's. And that might work. I, I hadn't really thought about that. So that, that could work. Uh, but I'm trying to get you to say something else. Yeah, could you add one every time? But here's the thing, is that in between, you can't remember what the last guess was. So, so you have to write a function, a function that's a function of just two arguments, n and k. So I'm not gonna, it's not going to be n, k, and the list of all the moves that, that people made. It's not going to be that. It's just going to be n and k. So you can't you can't see what what you can't see the history of the game. So how could you do it? How could you make sure that you that you would never fall into the trap? Okay, so I'll leave that open. But you're going to have to figure that out in order to get full credit on the assignment. Oh shoot. Okay, you're going to have to figure that out. How can you make sure you don't fall into the trap of losing against a constant player? Because do realize that if you start out in a frowny face position, and if you take the strategy that every time I'm in a, I'm in a frowny face position, I'm always going to play one, for example, then you become a constant player if you're playing against the constant player who plays K. You won't know. OK, so you have to think about that. <clears throat> Good. So now we're going to play a different game. Uh, yes, and so, so b by the way, uh, just as a cl closing remark for this, uh, this is this is called the matchstick game. So, that's its name, and it is related to uh, it's related to uh, a different game. It's it's not actually okay. So let me back up. There, it, in in common parlance among non-mathematical folk, there's a game called NIM. And very often, what mathematicians call the matchstick game, the general population calls NIM. Uh, but what mathematicians call NIM is something else. Uh, okay, so there, there's a different game, a, math, a mathematical game called NIM. And the matchstick game is, is closely related to it. The general population calls the matchstick game NIM, but math mathematicians call that, that game the matchstick game. <laughs> okay? So, what I'm saying is that if you, start, if you go to Google and start, start going to this, you need to understand that mathematicians and the general population don't agree on what's called what. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So now we're going to play a different game. This game is called the Monty Hall problem. Or the Monty Hall game. Well, this this okay. This is called the Monty Hall problem. And then the actual name of the game is Let's make a deal. <laughs> so there's 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 a modern version of 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 that game show with Wayne, Wayne Brady, let's make a deal. But, and, and they have games on that show, but this is not, those games are not this game. 
Okay, so here, here's the game. Uh, so there's three doors. Yes, you should change your guess. <laughs> uh, but the question is, the, 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 the punchline is, is easy, but the question of why you should do it is, the, uh, understanding why is less, is, is less easy. That's so now, true. here's the thing. There's three doors, uh, and you, you cannot see behind them. So you you can't see it. Uh, so you're you're the game the game show. You're you're the contestant, and I'm the host. So now I I know what's behind the doors. Okay. So for for sake of argument, um, for sake of argument, uh, so the way the game went is that behind one of the doors was a prize that that you'd like, like money or something. Okay. Terrific. And then behind the other two doors, uh, there were goats. Okay, which I'll just like this. That's fine. Okay, so behind behind the other two doors were goats. Uh, and the way the game works, so you can see them now, but you can see them in this drawing. But understand, if you were playing, you wouldn't know. So the way the game goes is the host first says to the contestant, says, please choose a door. Okay. So the contestant... Chooses a door. Chooses a door. Okay, so now, uh, so just just to make it, uh, you know, just for sake of argument, let's say that the contestant chooses door number three. That that door is not revealed. That door is not revealed. So now what happens is now the host reveals a goat. So now, let, let's make sure that this is logically possible. Consider all the possibilities of the door that the contestant could have chosen. Is it always possible for the, ho for the host to reveal a goat? Yes. Yes, right? Because if, if, uh, if unbeknownst to the contestant, they chose a goat door, then the host would reveal the other goat door. And then if unbeknownst to the contestant they chose the prize door, then the host could reveal either goat door. Okay? So, so, so this, this, is, this is a well-defined thing to do. Now, because, now, now let's come back to our omniscient position. Because we know the actual, the actual configuration of the game, and because the contestant chose this door, that means that this is a deterministic thing now. What's going, what must happen as a result? The host is going to reveal door number one, the, 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 the leftmost door. So the host does this. This, this, is the door that the, this is the door that the host reveals. And now, three, the contestant, uh, the contestant, uh, now there's two unopened doors, right? The contestant uh, chooses uh, one, of, one of the remaining doors. So now, by the time you get to step three, there's two doors that are closed, and you're going to choose one of them. And you can, you can formulate that as saying, do you want to stay with your original choice or do you want to switch? So there's two doors. What, what, sh what should you do? You should switch. So, so the, the, the optimal choice is to switch. But let's think about that for a minute. What, what if there were just two doors? It, 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 what, what if the game, what, what if the game was there just two doors? <laughs> That's it. Then it's a 50-50 shot. Then it, it's a 50-50 shot, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. The, you know the. So so now the game has gotten to a position where there's just two doors. Right, because the host revealed one of them. There's just two left. So it's sort of. It sort of you might intuitively kind of it might intuitively feel like 
Well, it shouldn't, it shouldn't matter. You should still have a 50-50 chance. But, in fact, you have a far better chance of winning if you switch. In fact, you have a, you have a two-thirds probability, a 66%, you know, 66.66666% chance of winning if you switch. And you only have a one-third chance of winning if you stay. No matter, no matter, no matter what the other stuff occurred. And that's kind of surprising. A lot, a lot of even mathematicians and, and, well, maybe not mathematicians and statisticians, but, but a lot of even, like, science folk are, are a little bit disturbed by this. That by the time you get to the, to the contestant's last choice, where they have to choose between two doors, the optimal strategy is to always switch. Okay, now let's see why. Let's see why. <clears throat> so for, for, uh, for sake of argument, let, let's, we're, we're going to go through the, the game tree. And just for sake of concreteness, for the sake of concreteness, let's assume that this is the configuration of, of the game. So, so we know this in advance. So in the first place, there's a decision. So this, this, is, this is decision number one, where the contestant is, is supposed to choose a door. And I, what I'm saying is that we're going to calculate it, assuming that, calculate the results, assuming that this is uh, the winning door, the second door. So there's three possibilities that the contestant could choose. OK. And Let's say that the contestant chooses uniformly, randomly uh, um, among these three doors. So what's the pro supposing we have such a contestant, <laughs> what's the probability that the, that the contestant would choose door number one? A third, right? So they would choose door number one with probability a third. So this is, this is cho choosing door number one. What's the probability they choose door number two? A third that they would choose door number two. And then the probability that they choose door number three is a third. OK. So now, considering, so, so this is door number one, door number two, door number three. So, so let's, let's go through, the, through, the, through what happens if the door, if, if contestant chose door number one. So now it's time for the second choice. It's the host choice. Now, what is the host required to do? To reveal a goat. The, the, the host is required to reveal a goat. Uh, but because, because of that logical, because of, the, because of the condition of the game, the, the, the uh, host knows that the winning door is two. That means that the host with probability one, will choose what? They'll choose door number three. They must, because contestant chose door number one, and the host must choose a goat. So the host has to choose door number three. OK. So the host chooses door number three with probability one, because there's nothing else they can do. OK. Now let's consider that. The, the, the situation in which here's, the, here's the, the state of the game from, from an omniscient point of view, and the contestant chose do door number two. Then, then the host can reveal either door. Uh, so for, for sake of concreteness, uh, let's assume that the host uh, chooses uniformly randomly. So what's the probability that the host will choose door number one? Half, right? So with half probability, the host will choose door number one. And with half probability, the host will choose door number three. OK. Similarly, uh, similarly if, if the contestant chooses door number three, then what is the host going to do? The host must select door number one. They can't, the host is, because the host has to follow that rule, they have, they have no, uh, no other choice. 
Uh, be, I don't know. Because I just <laughs> should be half. Thank you. Okay. So with probability one, they will select door number, uh, d door number one. Yeah. Okay. So now, now it comes to the third choice, and now this choice is in the hand of the contestant. Okay. So now, uh, again, I want to I want to point out to you that by the time you get here, there's just two doors, and the and superficially it seems like the contestant is told. Choose one of the doors. Uh, well, let, let's, consider, let's consider the strategy that the contestant is choosing to always stay. Well, wh which one do you want to do? Because we're going to do both. So, so, so uh, do you want to always stay or do you want to always switch first? Okay, we'll, we'll do stay first. So suppose that, um, so there's two possibilities for this one, two possibilities for this one, two possibilities for this one, two possibilities for this one. So what I'm going to do is in red, in red, I'm going to, I'm going to write the, strat the, the, the result if you always stayed, if you always stayed. So uh, to get here, what door, what door did the contestant choose initially? They, they chose door number one. So I'll say that, uh, so to getting to here, they're either going to switch, they're either going to stay with door number one, or they're going to switch to what's the door that they can switch to? <coughs> door number two, right? Why can't they switch to door number three? Because that's the one the host opened, right? Okay. So if they got here, they really the code. <laughs> give me that goat. <laughs> okay. So then, so uh, if they're going to stay, what door will they stay with? If they're at this branch of the, at this position in the tree, they're going to stay with door number two. And if they're going to switch, they're going to they're going to switch to door number what? Three, because the host revealed door number one. So they're going to switch to three. Okay, if they're here and they're going to stay, what are they going to stay with? Two. And if they're, if they're here and they're going to switch, what are they going to switch to? One. And uh, if they're here and they're going to stay, they're going to stay with door number three. And if they're here and they're going to switch, they're going to switch to door number two. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> so now uh, let's look. W w how, how many how many end states are there? Uh, there's eight. So now how many of them are winners? Four of them are winners. Uh, so in particular, all the ones that end up with you with door number two are winners. So this is a winner. So that's a winner. That's a winner, that's a winner, that's a winner. So notice that, that there's only eight end states, and, and four of them, that is to say half of them are winners. Are we sure that, that, that any strategy will work? Because half of the end states are winners, and half, and half losers. Okay, so, so in red, let's, let's go, I'm going to write... I'm, I'm going to fill out the tree as if we're going to unconditionally stay. I'm always going to stay. So I chose door number one. I chose door number one. And I'm going to stay with door number one. So that means with probability one, I'll do that. And with probability zero, I'll do that. Similarly, with door number two, I'm going to stay with door number two. So with probability one, I'll stay. And probability zero, I'll switch. Uh, uh, similarly, with prob for this one, with probability one, I'll stay, and probability zero, I'll switch. And for this one, with probability uh, one, I'll stay with door number three. And with probability zero, I'll switch. So supposing that, that this choice was uniform random, this choice was uniform random, and then the last choice is I'm, I'm going to stay. 
now we have a probability tree. How do you calculate the probability of getting to each individual node? Right, you multiply the probabilities that took you there. So to get to this node, it's the probability of getting here is one multiplied by one multiplied by a third. One times one times a third. Okay, so then that means we, we would land here with probability a third. Okay, what's the probability of getting here? Zero. zero. Because that would be zero times one times a third. <coughs> what's the probability of getting here? Sixth. One sixth. <coughs> what's the probability of getting uh, here? Zero. What's the probability of getting here? A sixth. What's the probability of getting here? Zero. Here. A third. And here. Zero. So now, which ones are winners? How many, how many times did we win? These two times, right? These are the only winners. So the probability of getting here is a sixth, and the probability of getting here is a sixth. So what's the probability of winning over all possible, if, if these were uniform, this choice was uniform random, this choice was uniform random, and then the last choice is stay? A third. That, that's your probability of winning. One out of three times you'll win. Now let's do it the other way, which is to say, suppose that we're, gonna, we're going to unconditionally switch. <clears throat> So if we unconditionally switch, that means that with zero probability, with zero probability we'll stay, and, and one probability will switch. Zero probability stay, one probability switch. Zero probability stay, one probability switch. Zero stay, one switch. So now that being the case, the first choice uniform random, the second choice uniform random. Well, uniform random, what I mean by that is that when there is a choice, it's uniform random. <laughs> Uh, so now let's calculate the probabilities from the green. So what, what is the probability of getting here now for the green? Zero. And getting here? A third. And again, is there any question how, I, how I'm computing one third? It's the probability of the individual arcs. It's the product of the, of, of, of the probabilities of each arc. Uh, okay, what's the probability of getting here? Zero. What's the probability of getting to, to this one? Uh, a sixth. So one, one, well, this is kind of confusing. Okay, one sixth. What's the probability of getting here? Zero. And getting here? One sixth. And the probability of getting here? Zero. And the probability of getting here? One third. So now the question is, is of all the green probabilities, which ones were winners? This was a winner. Uh, so we will never reach that winning position. Uh, we'll never reach that winning position. Uh, wait a minute. Ah, here. And, th and then this is a winning position. So what's the probability of winning if you switch? Two thirds. Two -thirds. So. I mean, it's laid out for you right here. I, I, I showed you every possible choice. But, but yet, even when you show, it, show folks every possible choice, a lot of folks are like, I don't know, man. You get down to two doors, it's 50-50. <laughs> well, I'm telling you it's not. Okay, and this, this, this game tree is, is an illustration of why it's not. Yes? The probability of the first door you choose being that of a goat is unaffected by the reveal of a goat at another door. Okay, um, let, we'll unpack that in just a second. Uh, but at any rate, what we're, what we're going to do is we're going to write an assignment that does this. Okay, in particular, you're going you're gonna to make, a, you're gonna make functions which, which do all conceivable choices for choice number one, another one that does all conceivable choices for 
for choice number two and all conceivable choices for choice number three. And we'll numerically simulate it with thousands and thousands and thousands of runs. And then, at least from my point of view, that if you, if you make a numerical simulation and it turns out that switching really does have a two-thirds probability, well, those are just the facts, right? You can't really, you can't really deny uh, a simulation. It, it, at least, <laughs> you know, it, 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 removes a, it removes doubt. Okay. So, now, uh, what he said. Let's consider a slightly different game. Let's consider a slightly different game, which is where there's more than three doors. So the main, the main confusion <coughs> about the Monty Hall problem is that there's three doors. So now let's consider a different game where there's a hundred doors. Okay. There's a hundred doors. So uh, one, two, in fact, I'm just going to do 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. But, but the thing I'm about to show you becomes more and more obvious the more doors there are. So now, what we're going to do is to, to, to extend the analogy to make a bigger game. We're going to say that there's one winning door. One, one, one winning door. Uh, w which of these do you want it to be? Doesn't matter. Seven. seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So this is the winning door. So this this would be a winner. Okay. Uh, so I'll do another one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight, nine, ten. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ten. Okay, good. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, wait. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So the winner. Okay. So now, uh, there, there's, there's ten choices. And if, you're, if, if uh, it comes to the contestant, if they're choosing uniformly randomly, then with a 90% chance, can, can we agree, a 9 out of 10 chance, they're going to choose not the winner. Okay? Or if you like, they only have a 10% chance of choosing the winner. So let's go through both, both pos possibilities. So would someone tell me, someone choose a door that's not a winner? Four. four. One, two, three, four. So contestant chooses door number four. Okay, so then now, in the, sec in the second game, let's say that contestant chooses door number seven, unbeknownst to them. So contestant chooses this one. And so now here's the thing. What, what the, to, to get it down to a choice of stay or switch, because that, we're, because that in the end is the way the game works. Do you want to stay with your door or do you want to switch? How many doors does the, does the, um, does the host have to reveal now? They have to re reveal eight doors so that, so that the contestant's choice is stay or switch. So, so which eight doors do you want to reveal? You, you, just, you just can't do that one because that's because that's the winner. Sorry. And you can't do that one either. So, so which eight? All of them, right? All of them. So, so this one's gone. 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 Now there's two doors that are that are unopened. There's two doors that are unopened, and uh, one of them is, is a winner, and one of them isn't. So, so if, if you stay, if you stay, that is to say, if you stay with this choice, uh, if, if that's your strategy, you're going to unconditionally stay, that means that you're saying, the first choice I make has a 90% chance of losing. And I'm going to stay with it, right? Or if you like a 10% chance of winning, I'm going to stay with that. S switching has, therefore, what probability of winning? 90%. 9 out of 10 chance. Okay, so how about, how about this one? Suppose that the game is here, that 
that the, the, the winning door is number seven, and 10% of the time, uniformly, randomly, you're going to choose the winning door. The host has to reveal how many doors? Eight. So just, just for sake of, of argument, let's say that, they reveal, that, 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 this is, that this is what happens. So now, in this case, um, if, you, if you switch, you'll lose. And if you stay, you'll win. So suppose that your strategy is, con is to unconditionally stay. Okay, then that means that, that this is going to result in a win how much of the time? 10% of the time. Okay, so does everybody see the argument? If there were a million doors, you're going to choose one. Very unlikely that you chose the winner. And, and then the, the host is going to, is going to reveal okay, 999,998 goats. <laughs> there's going to be one door. That there's there's going to be two doors left. One, the door that you chose and the one door that the, go <laughs> that the host didn't reveal. So does everyone see that, oh, you've just got to switch? Yeah. yeah, good. So any question about, uh, about this problem? Okay, so the, perp the, there, there's, the purpose of, 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 of doing this is to let you know that when you're trying to figure something out and you don't know for sure about it or you don't completely understand it, you can always have MATLAB numerically simulate it and see. So MATLAB is very good at doing numerical simulations, and we'll do that on Tuesday. So have a nice uh, Thursday. <coughs>